Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, the first episode of uh, Unfolding the Soul. This is going to be uh, an interview with uh, my beautiful guest, Noderick. Um, we, we're going to go uh, try to unfold her soul a bit. Um, you, you might know her from her podcast, uh, which I participate in line by line. You want to say something about your podcast, Nodrik? Yeah, we are just uh, discussing uh, lyrics to songs, um, trying to analyze them through our own projections. <laughs> just enjoy it. a lot of really funny conversation in there. Yes. So, so what we're what we're trying to do there is we're, we're trying to to give like a certain approach, right? Like, what what does a song text mean to us? And and I want to extend that that idea in into these interviews that I'm I'm going to do in my series, where I will try to to create a way of looking at yourself and at other people uh, that allows you to appreciate the value that they find in life and their meaning. And, and I think that looking uh, at people do that will, will slowly allow you to look at yourself in that way and, and thereby start changing your life. So yeah, that's, that's my input. And so the topic that we're going to discuss is, is uh, not, not is a performer. She's been uh, performing the largest part of her life effectively uh, in, in different uh, ways. And we're, we're going to try and find out like how, how that has formed her as a person. So uh, yeah, Nordrick, maybe you, you want to start off with, with a little bit of history. Like what, what did you do? Okay. So um, I'm a kid of very young parents. Like they had me when they were 20, both of them. And, and like since I was born, I was growing up within massive amount of of uh, people around me, uh, making jokes, having fun. Actually, and this is the environment I feel most comfortable in. Uh -huh. uh, like there was there is this memory of um, my um, my dad being at the party center of attention and then he would like scream out there is my little girl <laughs> and get me like this tiny little ball of happiness into the center of attention right and I think that was the reason I was drawn to stage Right? It's it's a place of attention and love for me. And yeah, afterwards I would have to like change that around. So the stage would be something else. Mm -hmm. so, so would it be fair to say that, that in your youth, you, you got the sense of, of an ideal, right? Like this is how it's supposed to be. And, and that you use that ideal to try and recreate that in, in later stages searching so, yeah that that was a pattern right um uh, you you get in a center of attention and then everybody is becoming uh, happier somehow right because of you and basically this this idea was imprinted uh before I don't know if it's ideal. It was. It's just. It's just a mindset that I was raised in. Mm -hmm. like, but but what I mean by ideal is something that you strive for, right? Like that you, you try to capture again. Uh, not at the moment. Not not as much as uh, in the past. Yeah, that that's in where the, I want to go, right? Like in in the journey, right? So in the in the past that. In the past, that's basically the only uh, love I could receive mm -hmm. is is the attention of of the crowd, per se. Like, so, and I would be noticed in a kindergarten by 
a music teacher and she would like single me out it's like oh that girl has a good voice right like and then she would be, put me on a little chair and like you sing and we will all cheer for you right and mm-hmm. then i was like oh my god again love and they all are happy <laughs> you know like entertaining people is like yeah so in some sense you you found a gift right like you found that you have had a gift some something that you could provide to other people but also that provided something back to you I think everybody has this gift, right? Like everybody has this gift um, and just discovering it, like they don't need to use it per se, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, um, I mean, like everybody has some sort of gift that they can give to other people, right? Uh, Some people give knowledge, and other others um, entertain people comedians Mm -hmm. but the desire to entertain a crowd it's just like yeah that's oh singing that's the that's the the that's the thing that i can do that works best right but if i would not sing i i definitely would be a comedian or something else it was not the gift itself rather than de- the desire to to be in this crowd mm-hmm. it's yeah <laughs> singing is the easiest one i think <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you gotta pick what suits you right um so so you you're talking about somewhat natural situations right where the environment put you on on a pedestal effectively Mm -hmm. and and then uh you you could perform and and you you notice that you like that and then at a certain point you you made the decision right like now i want to go for this right i want to take lessons i I want to so so how does that work for you like how, how did that work i mean I don't remember the decision deciding to take lessons just like lessons found me mm-hmm. in a sense right like it was it was like i'm not i was not trying to get uh, a teacher the teacher found me and he's like okay i'm working with that child like i'm i'm, I'm training the child to to sing right and 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 uh, singing itself right um, when you when you perfect your voice you make it better and better you can hear it you can hear the development like you can hear the difference um, as opposed to what it used to be a month ago for example right mm-hmm. uh, it, it it gives a lot of um, <laughs> dopamine maybe <laughs> uh, it gives a lot of positive self um self view when you know that you're becoming better at something mm-hmm. like other um other areas of school like uh math and stuff i also was good at math like really good and but i would not perfect it because singing was the first priority for me mm-hmm. right so, so you, 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 this, I, I'm just going to project a little bit, but mm-hmm. it feels to me that this was like the first area where you could like feel growth inside of you, right? Where, where you, where you could be part of, of the journey of, mm-hmm. of becoming what, what you were becoming. So, so that must have been like really, uh, strange in some sense right it's like like did you have a sense of where you were going or like did how, how did you form goals for yourself or was that still brought by the teacher i was uh, actually i always thought i will be a bookkeeper <laughs> <laughs> it's it's um it's the thing that i believed and singing even though i loved it um it's a it's it's something on the side right like uh, i always got this sense uh, even though you're a bookkeeper 
you can always be on stage in the evening right and i don't even know why i wanted to be a bookkeeper i think my teacher of mathematics told me oh you're good with numbers you should be a bookkeeper and it's like okay i guess i will be a bookkeeper <laughs> like it's not something i really wanted it's something that uh, my teachers told me and I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. mm. I, I don't think I wanted stage as much as I wanted uh, uh, to be the center of attention somehow. Mm -hmm. And the center of attention, not in a negative sense, right? Uh, I had this feeling or belief in me that um, when people will listen to me look at me their life will be better as arrogant as it sounds i know it sounds the most <laughs> narcissistic thing to say but um i had, had these memories where um, i would go in front of a crowd and all of those people have so many problems in their life like life was horrible for them like it was really hard time in the country as well like ugh. so all of those people would come on the saturday concert uh, in the local um, theater and my teacher whom i love to this day like absolutely a wonderful person he passed away unfortunately two months ago um, he he would stand beside me with uh, his uh, accordion, it's like this instrument, mm, being this father figure for me, right? Bring me into there and say like, girl, go there and make their day better. That's it, like, like you just go and make their day better. So I was not uh, <laughs> singing because, uh, because like I wanted to show how good I am, but the main motivation was to make day your day better. I, like it was like a service I would do for a crowd, right? Mm -hmm. And and then I would sing. The moment I sing, I would see people crying. Their eyes would light up, and and it made me feel like a really. <laughs> really good force in their life for just like the, these four minutes that I'm singing, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the stage. This is the power of stage for me. This, you know, and that's what I thought. Like, if I would not be a singer, if I would not have a voice, I would be a comedian. Because that's what I also see in comedy, right? Um, uh, People uh, cope with uh, horrible situations through laughter. And I know there are some jokes which you might say too soon or something, but those are the most funny ones, unfortunately, <laughs> because people cannot wait uh, to hear something that makes them laugh, right? Yeah, it's relief. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. What caught my attention is you, you said I went on stage with a specific mindset, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I, I wanted to brighten their days. I, I wanted to be a light in, in their darkness. Mm -hmm. So, so did, did that change how, how you were doing things, uh, having that mindset? I like as a kid, I don't remember having much control over my mindset or memory of how it was shaped. Mm -hmm. Like, to me, it seems like that was natural. Like that was, that just happened. I just let it happen, right? Like I went with the signs, <laughs> signs from my teachers like this. And they mm -hmm. would say, you're this, you're that. Just go with it. And like, yes. I mean, like I, were, I, I was a very agreeable child. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so. So if, if we take that way of looking at it, right? Like the, the teacher gave you inspiration, right? Like, and, and, and you, you fully took that on you and, and you were able to communicate that to the crowd. He also gave me, accept the inspiration. He gave me the way I should look at it. 
Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, he would tell me, art is the most important. Your art is not for you, your art is for them, right? Don't, don't spoil it, right? Like keep it, uh, keep it in the level of, um, um, I don't know, like good force of good or something, right? Don't, don't use it for evil. <laughs> so if you will have a talent, don't use it for evil. Like my teacher was an exceptionally good person, like mm -hmm. really good person. He helped a lot of children. Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful advice. Uh, using what you do for good. Um. So yeah. So that that's kind of your youth. Do you think you're you're complete about the story around your 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 growing up, growing into the act of performing? Well. Uh, so when puberty hit. <laughs> I joined a band and I completely abandoned my teacher in a sense, like the way like I just grew out of it because he basically works with children. Like when I'm already a teenager, like I would say 14, it's different. Yeah, so, were you looking for something else? Like what, what were you looking for? Uh, I don't know if I was looking for something. It's just my my crowd change. Instead mm -hmm. of hanging out with my teacher, I started hanging out with people who play instruments. And like before that, he was my band, and afterwards they became my band. And uh, yeah, yeah. I I I would keep the same mindset of brightening up other people's day. But the music that we would choose changed drastically. <laughs> we would choose like very rebellious uh, type of type of song. Right. So, so you're rebelling against your teacher, and then you're rebelling within the music that you're using. So, so yeah. in some sense, like it's it was your way of of going through puberty there, right? It's like... Yeah. So I was I was uh, growing out of this beautiful classical way of singing and tour <laughs> yeah I, I i really like my my idols were gwen stephanie and uh, guana apes like th those girls yeah. and i loved it like being in that mood rock and roll and you would still see you're lighting up other people's day. It's mm -hmm. just, it doesn't feel as light though, somehow. It like, it feels kind of darker and uh, alcohol involved and stuff like that. Fun though, like massive amounts of fun. Yeah, um, that, that's what I was hearing. Like, there, there's an outlet of passion there, right? Like there's a, there, there's so, some egg inside of you that, that you need to hatch and, and you're using music to do that. Yeah, so I was definitely throwing out a lot of energy into the crowd. That was awesome. And those are, weirdly enough, those, those are one of my favorite memories as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then? Do, right, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I do remember, though, the moment uh, when uh, it went too far. And I was like, oh, no, I'm stopping myself. And I, I stopped myself because of my teacher, right? Like I remembered what he taught me. I was like, yeah, I'm not that. Mm -hmm. so, so, so you're grabbing back to, to the past, this, this base, this grounding that you got from, yeah. uh, from a stable person. And then you're, you're in this, in this situation where, where the social inhibitions from your peers aren't aren't as strong and you you were able to grasp back to to what got installed in you and in your youth so that that's that's a really really good news right and in some sense it's you you are asserting yourself there right it's like oh no no i think things should be different right i, I can't keep going with the flow um because there's something else that's that's more important 
I seen what happened to them as well, mm -hmm. right? And I I seen how moving fo forward, let's say, and uh, having wrong ideas about why they're performing because like somebody wanted to be rich and uh, somebody just absolutely wanted to be on TV. They would pay a big price for that, right? And I've, uh, uh, and I seen that happen, and I was like, "Oh no, they that that is absolutely the wrong way, and the be too big a price to pay for a stage, right? It's mm -hmm. not like that stage was not important enough, but performing itself would be so ruined and poisoned for you that you would not be able to to." um to entertain the crowd again right like you would not be able to have the same kind of positivity <laughs> positivity such a big word right so so i i got the sense that mm -hmm. you you got an insight that if if you're continuing on the journey you you're, you're gonna grab things that from 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 not on the stage and, and you're going to take those with you on the stage and you, you got to maintain some 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 type of purity right where the corruption from the outside is is being kept out so so, so i feel like the stage was sacred right like yeah it was stage and art was sacred right and um like breaking some moral uh, guidelines for me would make uh, would mean to me break the stage right like it, it it was not worth it somehow right plus at the back of my head I was like yeah but you're still really good at math so like you should be a bookkeeper like <laughs> so I did I did go to to a university uh, I was like Mm, it's a financial kind of uh, degree yeah so so that that's another big shift in your life right so now now you're you're your own person right like you, mm -hmm. you gotta live outside of your parents house um, there's all of these transitions that that you're going so mm -hmm. so how would these transitions relating to your to your music You know what was easiest? Like people were like, "Why would you stop singing?" And uh, and I know why. It was easy for me to stop singing. Uh, it's because it was not singing itself; it was the crowd, right? So even uh, at the university, I would entertain the crowd. Even when I would work. I would I would uh, put on a little show like and if people are too uptight and and angry I would like entertain this crowd like when I would talk to one person I would try to entertain this one person as well so I kept this uh, kind of mindset going so the stage was not anymore like I understood that it was not the stage itself but the crowd that yeah that, that entertaining part so that's how I became an entertainer, basically. I think personality-wise, mm -hmm. MBTI test entertainer. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I feel like like what you did, right? You you recognize something that you're good at, right? Like a, mm -hmm. a, a way to connect to people, right? Like, yeah. uh, and entertainment is in some sense pleasing people, right? Like you, you're you're giving them what what they want or or, or a way to feel good and and you 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 saw this this trick right or, or this this capacity and you started applying it in in all areas where you had social relations um so so but but part of that right because you you mentioned that that you stopped singing so so part of that would be that you you've chosen to to give up the the actual performance on stage 
and and now you're just someone who performs in life um so yeah like like what what other effects did that have this 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 shift well because the crowd was per se smaller uh i stopped uh writing songs and music right mm. I missed collaborating on creating something together with uh, with band. Uh, yeah, that one was really missing in my life. But when I would form uh, friendships or partnerships, I would bring that kind of experience in there. So we initially end up creating something always with all my friends. I don't know. So I, I don't think it's ever left me the stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so I I feel like uh, in in that stage there was there was also a, a retreat happening in some sense, mm -hmm. right? Like like the there there was all these roles that were being fulfilled, right? Like the creation role, um, being in a band is also a social structure right that that you can rely on um and, and all of these these things that they, they, they fell away and mm -hmm. and now you had to compensate for that in, in in some other way right so and then yeah. i i see that that reaching out in in a relationship in in a creative way is, is trying to revivify that that aspect right like this this value that you perceived in the past mm -hmm. um yeah so 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 how did that go on like it still goes on, so I don't know. <laughs> like so, I, I'm still, I'm still compensating for 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 lost stage, basically. It never changed. Mm -hmm. So, so, so you 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 don't think there's there's another phase like this is this is uh, the same thing that that's been going on I mean, less or more. I, I was like I'm I'm more grown up and I'm calmer, let's say, right? But. In one way or, or, or another, even though it transformed itself, uh, it's still the same motivation and it's still the same force. Mm -hmm. And I, apparently the same kind of also skills that I use uh, to create, to write, right? Like those, um, those grew, but essentially the same, like they grew with me. Mm -hmm. So do you wanna, you wanna Talk a little bit about how the growing affected uh, affected your your music or your thinking about it. Mm. I don't know. It's uh... like did, did you have major insights, for example, uh, or or uh, shifts in 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 how you were attending to it, right? Like uh, now I'm. I'm going to have to go to this place to to develop my uh... Uh, still yeah. the same process i just like have uh, have better skills to do it like i can write faster so. mm -hmm. but the process of writing a song is basically unchanged right like <laughs> the only thing i have now is just more experience right like so the, the rhymes would be better but it's mm -hmm. it's unchanged in a sense, like I feel it. Mm. Like the initial motivation uh, to do things stayed the same, even though it changed its form. Let's say. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so what what does it allow it to change its form? Like, 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 can you pick like a skill that you learned and? describe how how it affected you <laughs> I, I can provide one maybe for you right so yeah we've we've written poetry together right and mm -hmm. you you started getting a sense of, of the rhythm in in the poetry right and that mm -hmm. that started changing a lot for you how how you wanted to construct the poems for yourself and 
and how, how you were thinking about writing poetry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe you want to explore that a bit. No. No. Okay. <laughs> it's just like uh, it. 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 Uh, if you practice, it gets better. Mm -hmm. That's it. And um, there is not much talk about it. Like those are those are those are practice things. You just have to do it over and over and over again until it's better. Mm -hmm. And to describe how exactly it got better, it's just like yeah. You, you like people cannot know it in theory until they try it. Mm -hmm. say, so, <laughs> so, so, do, so do you feel that talking about it is, is kind of like uh, corrupting it a little bit it, it, it should should be left where it is no i just don't think it's uh, uh, it's something that can be described with words mm -hmm. right like okay. this is this is absolutely experience thing. Mm -hmm. like you can't uh, put words on on experience in a sense no, that yeah, that that's completely yeah, correct. Um, so, then I, I think we're arrived in the now, and and mm -hmm. with the now we can start looking at the future. So, so do you have do you have ideas about how you how you're gonna develop this this stage thing? Like, do you have any dreams, any aspirations? Well, that one is a good question, right? knowing who i were and how i became who i am now i definitely know that uh, kind of i will find uh, i will feel most useful to people if i am able to brighten their day when they're in the darkness right and that gives me um, idea or a plan on how to move forward right that's that's probably why i also started um, the podcast so the podcast is explaining a thing right like it explains songs mm -hmm. um, and plus it would if you hear many opinions on on, on the same songs uh, plus jokes it it helps you to understand other people more and mm -hmm. i i do hope it will uh bring uh some uh, some couples together like because like that those are m most of the songs we are discussing is about are, are about uh, relationships right mm -hmm. so i do see a value in it right there is some service that i can do in there plus the the funny part the jokes uh putting things into perspective laughing about the hard part like uh, i remember the episode we had on apocalypse <laughs> like, like the, the judgment day and we're like yeah rock concert judgment day <laughs> mm -hmm. and it was funny like People all fear that that horrible judgment there, and I was like, let's make it fun, <laughs> and that puts a positive spin on it. Even though a friend of mine called it heresy, but <laughs> so yeah, th this is really interesting to me because right? because I, I sense that you, you've made a development where when you were young you you were you were just trying to be the light. Uh, mm -hmm. And now I feel like you have a better sense of what the light is, right? Like what role the light is fulfilling and, and how you participate in, in doing that. Yeah. It's just like I became my own teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in a sense. Like, oh, remember how you listened to the teachers and uh, where they guided to? And uh, now, since my best first teacher passed away, I became my own teacher. Like, I was like, well, you're on your own now, girl. Like you have to, you have to, <laughs> you have to find your own way to help people and not wait for, for the teacher, like to bring you on stage and like, you help. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, like, so do you do, do you get do you get a sense of growth in, in there as well like 
Yeah, I, I do get a feeling that like I, I was left on my own. You know, like it's not like he was in my life uh, a lot, but just he, the fact that he was there, mm -hmm. and now I feel like he's not. And yeah, that motivated me, like. Uh, to, to move forward and to do things somehow. It's like motivation from a horrible thing that happened. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it. Well, I, I, I think people understand it, right? Like you, mm -hmm. you, 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 when, when something big happens, right? You, you get confronted with, with how things are. And then you're like, oh, geez, I, I didn't pay attention to that. Like I, I should mm -hmm. work on this. So, so I, I think people have had that experience. Um, so so yeah, like so so you got you got this this like oh I I, I want to provide this service to people right. So in in some sense you're you're now more more intentional in 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 what you're doing. Um, so yeah, like what 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 are your hopes for for the future? Right? Like where where do you want to go with that? with the podcast or well yeah like it doesn't have to be in the podcast format right but like what 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 do you think would be a way that you could provide most value yeah to help as many people as i could mm -hmm. and would, yeah, would that be like... back on stage or would that be through a podcast or would... uh, whatever comes uh, mm -hmm. whatever possibility there is um usually i'm like i'm going with the flow kind of person so <laughs> i would listen to the to the signs from the outside somehow right mm -hmm. like i always meet the right people at the right time somehow mm -hmm. um, so i will have to wait and find out like so far <laughs> uh, so far the way i found um uh the way I found this uh, podcast. So I'm doing that at the moment, but I want to see how it's going. Uh, yeah, and then I will just like see what's on the other side of this book that I'm reading. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that, that's a really beautiful way to, to deal with that. So uh, yeah. I, I respect it. So I want to ask you like, uh, is, is there anything still alive for you that you feel that that wasn't mentioned uh... let me think is there anything still alive for me that wasn't mentioned well i think people should understand what really motivates them right like when there is a dream uh, of somebody to have a yellow car, right? This person, like, no judgment on dreams, right? But th this person has to think, why yellow? Why this car? Like, what was, uh, what is the reason, right? And... And there, perhaps, uh, they might find out uh, what their purpose in life is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First, dreams are connected to purpose, but they are like these um, sketches of of shadow of a purpose somehow. <laughs> like yeah. purpose casts the shadow somewhere in your mind and then a person will like what's the shadow looks like oh i think it's a car yeah but the purpose itself it is, is something completely different right mm -hmm. and just look deeply into your dreams why you why you have them maybe that oh <laughs> so profound no I, I i like it that that's great right so so mm -hmm. So do do you feel that that you you were doing that throughout your life, or was there like a point where where you started doing that and and things changed? Well, 
I mostly go through life without uh, thinking much uh, and planning much, just like, again, step by step. But the moment I would stop myself um, and just kind of try to describe this situation to myself, right? Like I would, I would have to, to the point that I would take a, a sheet of paper and I would like, here I am now, this and this and this are the current circumstances and those circumstances why and like if i would analyze the current picture of my life right mm -hmm. and i would do it from time to time maybe once a year something um yeah so it's not that that i i started doing it even as a child <laughs> so i do it through all my life like uh, the first one I ever did was when I was like three years old, I came to a mirror and I was like, okay, here I am now. I'm a person, I'm a girl. There are other people. Like I would have to kind of bring myself to where I am at the moment, mm -hmm. like to remind myself of the, of the current situation. Um, like very short, you like you woke up and then you had to remember in what body you are somehow, mm -hmm. right? Like from a dream, like, oh my God, I'm not a knight anymore. What, where is my horse? <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, I'm a woman. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally one of the dreams I had as a child. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so that sounds like a really good practice, right? To, to ground yourself back in, into what's going on so that you don't lose sight of, of all the things that you're engaged in. Um, so I, I, I was wondering, how did people uh, figure into that? Like, how do, you, how do you relate to people to, to try and figure out where you're at? Is that a thing that you, you do? I mean, I just like attach uh, a role of a teacher onto people. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, what, like, here you are, and what is the lesson here somehow, right? Also, like it makes it makes it easier somehow, right? And makes me see the people instead of um, uh, like audience. My idea about the people, yeah, audience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of the audience, right? Like this is the person. What do I see in that person? Mm -hmm. the audience. Maybe that's a good thing to explore, right? Like, so, so do you, what's the distinction between an audience and, and, and a person? Like, how, how does that work for you? I still have to think about that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, for me, people, both people and audience, like that's how I can serve. Uh, in order to entertain people, I have to see what their needs are. So they're all people to me. That's why mm -hmm. I cannot distinguish that that much, right? The all audience is my teacher. Uh, all of them are people. All of them have hurts, desires, bad days, and stuff like that. So for me, I, I, I don't think it's distinguishable at the moment. Perhaps, perhaps I can think if, if people play different role. I think I just like see them as this one whole thing. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, if you go into a crowd of people who have a bad day, they're not audience to me. Okay. They're people that I have to make their day better. It's, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to explain that more. No, I, I, I think that was great. Like I, 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 I do. So, so, so you, you, you feel like a, a, a spirit there, like a, an energy mm -hmm. that that requires something of you and and you you respond to the call like that's the way that i i hear you describe well many many of things that that you do in life right where where, where you're trying to find something in in the world to to participate in and and to attune yourself to mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, no plans. Just like do what 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 came to you, and just uh, the main idea here is do, right? Mm -hmm. Like when people plan too much, they don't do anything. The moment they start doing, 
the things will start happening in a sense get out of the head just like go with the flow somehow well that sounds like a, an amazing advice to to end up on uh yeah i i really enjoyed the conversation uh i i hope the going through the conversation was also helpful for you like do you, do you think that was uh, valuable it was valuable great job um, for the first podcast really great job why thank you um, do you have any final words have fun people <laughs> enjoy your life i will provide uh, nodrick's information uh, in the description so you can find out all about her and also a little bit about me because i'm participating <laughs> in the podcast and uh, i would like for everybody to leave as as much comments as they can uh, I, I need input to to figure out like which which things work which things don't uh so yeah please uh, don't hesitate to to give me feedback Help the guy out <laughs> yeah this poor guy is like struggling with with this this beautiful story um yeah so uh, thanks for watching and have a great life bye